Your teenage child has been diagnosed with functional neuroscope disorder, short for FND, and I have been treating teens with FND for quite some time by now. And I quickly realized that traditional approach of providing therapy to treat these conditions are not really working. And therefore, over time, based on science and evidence, so I'm not making things up, but I created the simple three steps to successfully resolve FND symptoms for all these teens that I have worked with. So today I want to share the exact three steps that I have been using to successfully treat hundreds and hundreds of teens who've been struggling with FND. It is called the Brain for Teens, short for Building Resilience and Improving Neural Health for Teens. So let's get started. When I say the brain for teens, it sounds kind of fancy, but it's really a fancy name for the simple three steps, which is what, how, and why. The what is you really have to know what FND is and then what it's not. I mean, FND is an umbrella term to describe this cross-wired communication problems within your brain and your body, even though the physiologically your body looks quote unquote fine. It is a real diagnosis. And a lot of people think that they didn't get any diagnosis. All they heard from the doctors in the ER or hospital or clinic is your child does not have epilepsy. So people misunderstand when they get the diagnosis of, let's say, non-epileptic seizures, that is not the same thing as, oh, your child does not have epilepsy. Non-epileptic seizure, NES, is a type of FND and that is a legitimate disorder. It's not a rare disease that you have to live with for the rest of your life, but it is a real diagnosis that can be definitely treated, if not solved. But these are the things that you have to know what FND is. Oh, by the way, FND is not just one thing that is causing this symptom. It is a biopsychosocial phenomenon. And I have tons of videos talking about what they are. And it's really, really important to understand that not only the teen themselves, but their parents, family members, friends, and other people, as many as possible, they all have to accept that this diagnosis exists and it is a diagnosis that your child is struggling with. If everyone is pointing at different directions and then thinking, let's say your friends, sisters, husbands, grandparents, friend is suggesting, oh, maybe it's this, you know, so therefore maybe you should go see this kind of doctor. If you're pulled in so many million different directions, then you're just missing the opportunity for the right type of treatment, which is to address the FND. And when it comes to FND treatment, the time is against us, unfortunately, meaning the faster you start treatment or the faster you start this healing process, much, much higher chance of your teen resolving completely. But if you keep dragging or not accepting the diagnosis, then you're losing the chance of your child getting better, which I really believe that is not what you want, which leads to the second part of the brain for teens, which is the how. So this is usually the bulk of the treatment or how I help teens get better from FND, which starts with three different subcategories, if you will. One is really you have to start reestablishing daily routine. FND is not a medical emergency or acute illness. Therefore, resting in bed all day long for weeks and weeks until they get better that is not the way to get better. That is actually the opposite of it. So you have to start reestablishing daily routine, not necessarily going back from 0% to 100% like right away, but gradually increasing the daily activity with the goal of getting back to their life. And then secondly, you have to rebalance the nervous system. Arguably, I would spend the most of time focusing on rebalance the nervous system throughout my healing journey with all of my patients in my private practice and also in my online program with the teens who are struggling with the same condition. That is really the bottom-up approach of A, understanding where they're at in terms of the state. Are they in the fight or flight state or are they in the frozen state? Mostly they're like kind of bouncing off of each other, you know, kind of like a ping pong. 
all the while passing this middle ring of being calm, relaxed, feeling like joyful and liveliness and feeling socially connected. Now, nobody's able to stay in that one spot forever. We all go back and forth between these three rings of the state within the nervous system. However, most of the time, the teens who have FND are in this fight or flight state as their familiar, comfortable place, even though they don't like it. So number one, they have to understand that's what they're at and then learning how to turn down the volume of the fight or flight state by using all kinds of relaxation strategies or any relaxing tools and skills that they can have or learn. And this is the bulk of the things that I talk to them about by using both internal and external resources. Internal resources is something that they can use on their own. So things like slow breathing, grounding technique, muscle relaxation, meditation, whatever you want to call it. And then the external resources would be something they can use. So taking shower, taking a bath, going for a walk with friends, spending time with family and friends. So it requires something or someone else to do this thing to feel relaxation. Both of them are great resources. You want to have sort of balance. So it's, you're not relying on one thing or the other. And now with that, FND is primarily in this frozen state whenever they're having that episode. Therefore, it's really important for them to not just using that relaxation strategies because then they just keep going down and down and down. What they can do instead is they can uplift, yank themselves out of that state of frozen. So things like bringing joy, laughter, social connection, anything that would help them dancing, working out, eating something spicy or sour or bitter, anything to make them sort of having this like feeling of jolt briefly so they can get themselves out of that state. And then the third subcategory of this how part is reconnecting neural health. So this is more like the top down approach of using cognitive behavior therapy techniques, acceptance and commitment therapy techniques and communication strategies. So those are the things that I teach. The step three of the brain for teens involves the why. Now, remember I said what, how, and why in that order. Now, traditionally with psychotherapy, we jump into this why state. And then a lot of families also want to know why this is happening to my child, why this is happening to me, you know, that kind of thing. However, when we try to investigate the underlying triggers or factors right away, without having any tools or understanding about what this is, then it's almost like that you are trying to fly without having any knowledge or skills or tools and experience and training and things like that. So chances of you being able to fly successfully is pretty slim, right? That's why I would like to start with the what and then the how to build the skills. Then they can equip themselves to investigate this why part. And it goes back to the beginning of the biopsychosocial factors. So I always talk about, so based on this biopsychosocial factors sort of checklist, how many of them apply to you in particular, and then we can tackle one at a time. And sometimes that could involve more in-depth work of cognitive behavior therapy or acceptance and commitment therapy or trauma work or family work, all of that stuff that is necessary to address each and every situation. But until you address the underlying triggers, you're likely to have these symptoms come back. And then when that happens, you are sort of back to square one, not knowing why this is happening. So this can be somewhat uncomfortable process to go through because a lot of people just want to cut to the chase and know why this is happening. Therefore, they know how to handle this and then knowing what this was actually. It's the other way around, right? So you need to get back to your life while rebalancing your nervous system, building skills so then you can dig deeper. All right, so that is the brain for teens strategies. Now I have in-depth video about what these things are in each and every step of the way on my website. So link is down below. So feel free to check it out. What can you do as a parent in teens if you come across with this video? Well, first of all, welcome. And I'm so glad that you found me. I have tons and tons of resources and videos and information about teen FND and what you can do, not only at home, but school, including parenting strategies, 
school checklist, action plan, and how to communicate with school, how to communicate with doctors about clarifying diagnosis and things like that. So make sure to check the description box below for more information. First of all, you need to have the correct diagnosis. And second, you need to accept the diagnosis once you get it. There might be something else going on. Usually there are something else going on, but as soon as you get the diagnosis of FND, time to start the healing journey. And then ideally you work with the FND specialist who knows what they're doing. You may not be able to find someone locally, but nationally and internationally speaking, there are some providers like myself and other colleagues of mine. I do have a website list down below as well for additional resources. And speaking of which, I have been so busy preparing for the second version of my online program, Teen FND Academy, and I am accepting applications at the moment. So feel free to check it out, my website, watch the video and fill out the application to see if you're qualified for the interview process. And I have been getting so many encouraging words from the families who've gone through the program. It is so encouraging to hear that a lot of teens are getting better. And this really proves me that this brain for teens strategy is working well for many teens. So if you are feeling like you're at the end of the rope, don't give up because you can definitely get better. There is a chance. It may not be smooth linear recovery. In fact, it is not. It's going to be rocky, chaotic, and sometimes confusing. But in that process, you will get better. Now, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next video.